Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're reviewing AMD's new R9 380X video card which ships in only one variety and that is four gigabytes. So no two gigabyte, four gigabyte stuff here. It is only four gigabytes and the 380X is priced about where you'd expect it. It's above the 380 in the vertical landing at $230 MSRP with several of the board partners shipping their 380X is pre overclocked at about $240 to $250. So you've got a $10 to $20 price disparity in there, depending on which AIB you're looking at or add-in board partner. And the card has pretty familiar specs because it's still running the same architecture as found on the previous R9 300 series cards, like the R9 380, still on Hawaii, which was on the older 200 series cards as well, at least some of them, like the 290X. And the specs overall are familiar. So here's a specs chart that'll show some of those. But the core items to look at are, of course, the engine clock, also called the core clock. Stock, the card ships at 970 megahertz, but our model, which is a Sapphire Nitro R9 380X, ships at 1040 megahertz with a couple of other changes to the memory clock and things like that. If we look at more of the stock specs, you'll see that it is strictly 4 gigabytes, as I mentioned, and the 380X has 2048 stream processors. If you're curious what the 380 had, you can see it in a chart next to the 380X here. And the 380X has a rated TDP of about 190 watts, though we did our own internally validated GN official full power consumption test and have charts for that later on in this video. There are two six pin headers required for connection on the 380X that we have. Of course, with non-reference designs or super overclocking cards, they may add a pin or two for eight plus six pin normally for some of the overclocking cards. And then the AIBs, the add-in board partners, are offering 380X overclocked cards for about $10 more with the core clock at 1040-ish megahertz in the case of ours and the memory clock at about 1500 megahertz versus the 1425 megahertz GDDR5 memory clock stock setting for the 380X. The rest of the specs as shown in the table are all pretty standard for a device of the R9 380X's positioning within the vertical and you can check the charts on the website or some of them in this video for comparison against the existing 380 non-X video cards. AMD is clearly targeting NVIDIA's GTX 960 here as its primary competition to go head to head with. And that would include the primary model, the four gigabyte GTX 960, priced at almost the same as the 380X, about 230 to 240 with some rebate give and take if you even count those, but generally 230, 240. And the GTX 960 two gigabyte ships closer to $200. So there is that model as well. But as we just showed in our Assassin's Creed Syndicate test, the two gigabyte versus four gigabyte models can actually have a pretty large performance disparity between them, depending on what game you're playing. And you can search our channel for more information on that for, or, or just hit the Assassin's Creed Syndicate article at the top of the website. AMD is pushing DirectX 12 support pretty hard because it is actually in some games like Ashes of Singularity, which to be fair is a little bit AMD favored by the developers. In some games, AMD is showing a decent lead with DirectX 12 against Nvidia, and that is largely due to the way their architecture is designed. So that doesn't mean that there can't be an Nvidia lead. It just means that as of now, in the very early stages of DX12 with one or two games that exist with it, there is somewhat of an advantage for AMD finally, where it generally sees a disadvantage with its DX11 optimization and drivers and the architecture sort of struggling without a little bit of extra help. So to the end of this DX12 support, AMD is very big on pushing the fact that as DX12 comes along, cards like the R9 380X are much better at tessellation than the older AMD cards were. And this is definitely worth noting because AMD does regularly get beat out in tessellation by Nvidia, which is pretty good at it. And that's why Nvidia does some of their technologies and game works with tessellation, not necessarily to spite AMD, I'm not saying that, but because Nvidia is good at tessellation, they know that and they leverage it for things like hair works or some of their other effects that we've talked about in the past. Aside from tessellation, AMD is also pushing the fact that the dynamic usage of VRAM for tiled resources, like tiled textures particularly, allows for a higher virtual resolution 
of texture files so you can get a general higher quality output in the game, assuming the developers build for it because it really doesn't matter what the GPU supports if developers don't build for it. But the tiling is another feature that AMD is promoting as, hey, this is something that will work on the 380X. We're supporting it and we think we're good at it. So that's kind of where they're coming at from a marketing angle. And the other big items to look at are just going to be general performance and how does the TDP stack up against the previous cards, which ran very hot if you remember the 200 series and things like that. So we're going to look at all of that. Now before diving into the FPS benchmarks, a quick note that is important. We are in the process of merging two of our GPU benches into one. And that means that we have some Z97 benchmarks that we conducted and some X99. The reason we're including both of them here, unlike normally, is because the X99 platform did have some newer games benched, including Battlefront, Fallout, and things like that. So we wanted to include as many of those new games as possible and get the 380X benched on those as well. Now, when I had the 380, the 390, and the Fury X, we had all those cards on loan. So when you're looking at that data, it is using older drivers. Big important note, but for some of the games, like Metro and Grid and those types of older games, GTA even, there haven't really been any driver optimization since launch. The Z97 and X99 charts are pretty thoroughly explained on the website, but I'll try and mention which one was used here. In general, you're still looking at a 960 versus 380X benchmark. There's some comparative 380 benchmarking if it was a game for which we had the 380 non-X card. Let's first look at the thermal and power charts. These were created using our Z97 platform, which has been running our thermal tests for quite a while now, and allows for comparison to the R9 380, 390, Fury X, and many of the NVIDIA cards, including the competing 960. And this shows thermal data first, that the R9 380X Nitro, which is the Sapphire card, using the Sapphire cooler and all of that, landed at roughly 53 Celsius average Delta T over ambient, compared against the 45C or so of the 380 Nitro. And both of these were Nitro cards, which is great because that means it is somewhat of a more linear comparison than cross-brand cards. The 380 does primarily host a lower clock of 1010 megahertz versus the 1040 of the 380X, so that certainly contributes to the heat, which you can see in our 380 OC benchmarks as well. But if we look to power consumption, that gives a bit of a look at the full peak system load on the Z97 platform plus the 380X. So this is peak load, whole system, not just the GPU. We see the 380X consuming about 300.8 watts of power, and that's about 40 watts more than the R9 380, about 30 watts more than the overclocked R9 380, and about 85 watts more, pretty big, than the GTX 960 GPU that we've tested and that's the most immediate contender. The R9 390 sits at around 341 watts just for a comparison of something at a bit higher tier of a structure in the vertical. Getting to the FPS tests, let's start with Call of Duty Black Ops 3 just because it's a newer title. This test was conducted on our Z97 platform, but the R9 380 and R9 390 are not present here because they were on loan and we didn't have them for this test. You'll see more of those in the following benchmarks. In Black Ops 3, the R9 380X performs at an admirable 66 FPS average, though struggles a bit on the 1% and 0.1% lows, the frame times as we call them. The 66 FPS average plants the 380X just under the GTX 964 GB card and just over the GTX 962 GB card, though both 960s do have superior 1% low metrics. There's a, a bit of a gain for the 380X on average over the 962 gigabyte card. The 964 gigabyte beats the R9 380X by 3% with the 380X beating the 962 gigabyte by also 3%. So hopefully that's not too confusing if you just look at the table here. Moving on to the 1440p resolution Black Ops 3 tests, the 380X falls below the general playable range landing at 43 FPS average and with an 11 FPS 0.1% low. Certainly not great. To get 1440p playable would require either tanking the settings pretty hard to a much lower configuration or just running a lower resolution really or a, a higher end card with the 1440p resolution. For the 380X, you're generally stuck at about 1080p, at least in this game, unless you want to crash your settings, which isn't worth it in my opinion. You're better off going to another card. 
Let's look at some charts that show the R9 380 and R9 390 for better vertical comparison. These run our Z97 platform also. The Witcher 3 is still new and a GPU intensive game, so that makes for perfect comparison for our next benchmark. And at 1080p, with Hairworks disabled, anti-aliasing completely disabled, and ambient occlusion set to SSAO for fairness, the 380X lands at 38 FPS, just above the R9 285 and R9 380, both of which are at 36 FPS. That's a 2 FPS gap. The GTX 960 cards both hit 34 FPS and are effectively identical to each other in performance. And this has them beaten by the 380X by about 5.4% at 1080p. And we'd have to move to, to something more like medium or high for better playability, granted, because even at the frame rate we're at right now with the 380X, it's not great. But for comparative and competitive reasons, the 380X is exceeding the 960's performance by about 5.4%, 5 5 excuse me, with the NVIDIA technologies disabled, like Hairworks and things like that, which would impact the performance of NVIDIA as well. Metro Last Light is a long-standing GPU benchmark and includes nearly all cards we've ever tested. At 1080p, with very high quality and high tessellation settings, the 380X pushes 58 FPS, which is about a 5% gain over the 380 non-X, and that means the 380X holds, as you see here, about a 10.9% lead over the GTX 960 tested. At 1440p, the next resolution, as you can see here, the 380X can push about 40 FPS average and just barely lands above the R9 380 and R9 285, effectively identical cards. Again, this is not really a great card for higher resolutions than 1080p, but this is sort of where AMD's targeting the the 380X card. It's the gaming sweet spot, so to speak, as everyone calls it these days at 1080p. Shadow of Mordor puts the R9 380X at about 6.7% over the R9 380, a reasonable improvement, and lands it just within the 60 FPS ideal performance range. The 380X is about 9% ahead of the 380 for 1440p performance, so that is a reasonable gain or delta in the percentages, but would require some settings tunings to get it more playable in the ideal 60 FPS range because it is a bit lower than that with 1440p. Let's look at something new. Assassin's Creed Syndicate doesn't include the 380 and 390 in our benchmarks, but it does show some modern day lineup performance of Nvidia and AMD GPUs in opposition with one another. At 1080p, with our ultra custom settings defined in our separate Assassin's Creed Syndicate benchmark video and article, the R9 380X pushes 54 FPS against the GTX 960's 53 FPS. And if we look at the 4 gigabyte 960, that's about a 1.8% gain, so negligible. Against the 2 gigabyte 960, however, there's a much bigger gap of about 18%, and that gap between the two 960s, just strictly between them, is 16% and is in line with previous Assassin's Creed games, which seems to accentuate the 2 gigabyte versus 4 gigabyte mid-range GPU disparity. So a much bigger gap there. For more benchmarks, including the new Battlefront game, Grid, GTA, check GamersNexus.net for additional charts and analysis. Looking at overclocking, the R9 380X is fairly easy to overclock and limited right now, given that we didn't have proper voltage controls at launch. Here's a table showing our stepping of the overclocking over a test period, so you can see our trial, failure, and successes with the clock rate and so forth. We ended up with an 85 megahertz core clock offset yielding an 1125 megahertz engine clock and 50 megahertz memory offset yielding a 1550 megahertz memory clock. The power offset was maxed to 20%, which provided stability throughout our short-term and endurance tests with these finalized settings. This means we can overclock only about 7% on AMD's R9 380X, or the Sapphire version anyway, which is pre-overclocked, and we see around a 5 to 8% performance gain shown here in these overclock charts for The Witcher 3, Metro Last Light, and Shadow of Mordor, all of which have overclocked and non-overclocked benchmarks shown in the charts. This makes overclocking hardly worth it, but that's been true since the previous 300 series launches for AMD, and really the Fury X2 for that matter. AMD board partner cards are already pushing up against their st stable limits with the architecture provided, and the Fury X, which is all done by AMD basically, is also against its limit. So not a whole lot of room for overclocking right now. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's get into the conclusion here and talk about value. 
The R9 380X is priced effectively identically to the GTX 960 and depending on which 960 you're looking at and which game you're looking at, like Assassin's Creed, the disparity between the 2 gigabyte model and the 4 gigabyte 380X is quite large and that's true for the 4 gig versus 2 gig 960s also. One of the biggest performance gaps we saw was in GTA 5, which held about a 13% advantage for the 380X over the 4GB 960, and we also saw a gain for the 380X and Metro Last Light, about 10-ish percent for the 380X versus the 960 as well. And when you look at games like Black Ops, you see that there's a bit of trade between the two cards, the 960 and the 380, because the 4 gigabyte 960 has a couple FPS hold over the 380X, so they do trade blows depending on which game you're testing, and that's pretty standard for cards of about this price range. The 380X is a fierce competitor at this price point. It deals a hearty blow to Nvidia's GTX 960 stronghold at its current 230-ish dollar price point at the 4 gigabyte range, and that makes AMD a worthwhile look when you're buying a card of about this price. The 380X does hold a pretty substantial lead in some games like GTA 5 where there's a 13% delta and in other games Metro there's a, a good bit of a lead. Some games it's down to maybe 5% or even less, 1.8% in the case of a few of the titles we tested. So ultimately as always depends on what game you're trying to play but I would feel comfortable recommending either the 960 or the 380X at this point, which is not something I've said of AMD in recent attempts in the past, and that's been because of drivers. So with the iteration of AMD's drivers over the past couple months, the past five or so months in particular, I have seen a lot of improved stability. The team that is working at Gamers Nexus has had a lot fewer problems with black screens and flickering and crashing and things like that. So the drivers have gotten a lot more stable, they've matured a lot, and the new Radeon software is hopefully something that will continue and these software-related efforts because it's not out yet, but it does look like a step in the right direction for usability and sort of pushing users to the point where they can actually access the software with some level of certainty what they're doing rather than going through Catalyst Control Center, which although not bad, is not the most friendly to some of the newer users and builders out there. The GTX 960's primary advantage, as always it seems, is in thermals and power draw. So it draws significantly less power, about 80 watts or so, than the 380X, and that is something that Nvidia has been good at for a long time now, since the 400 series, which was very hot. And their thermals are solid as well. So it comes down to how much do you care about overclocking, because the 960 will be better at that in general. How much do you care about power draw? Because again, 960 is a bit better, but it does lag behind in some games, 13% in GTA 5, and then you got to look at the overall value proposition with frame rate. I would feel comfortable recommending both cards. The 380X is a very good buy if you're a budget system builder or if you just don't care about things like the power draw because ultimately 80 watts, maybe not so much for some people because you're looking at pennies, 10 cents or so per kilowatt hour. But anyway, 380X, it's a good buy. I'd do it at the $200, $230 price point. The 960 has some advantages, primarily in software support and in its power thermals and stuff like that. Hit the post roll link for Patreon if you like this type of objective journalistic coverage. And as always, subscribe, comment, things like that. We really appreciate you watching. Share the word. I'll see you all next time.